Hey everyone, it's Joy here for Heffy Doodle. I am super excited to be guest designing for them today. And my project for you is a five by seven swinging hot air balloon card. So I'm going to start with my background and my white cardstock is measured six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I'm using Distress Oxide inks to blend my background. I'm using Shaded Lilac, Wilted Violet, and Villainous Potion. Now at the top there, I have a circle mask. This is actually Tim Holtz Moon Masks. And I'm using the Medium Moon. And I just want to mask that area. And then we will get to the moon in just a little bit. But right now I want to get my night sky blended. So I want this to have a very magical feel to it. This is going to be a baby card, but obviously you could make this any type of card that you would want. One of the things to remember it, when you're ink blending is to make sure that your ink pads are nice and juicy because then you're going to really get a fabulous ink blend. And then also as you're moving on to the next color, you might need to go back and forth with the colors to really get a nice good blending transition between each colors. Now I am using the Head in the Clouds stencil and I am using the color that's a, one darker than where I'm ink blending. So I want these clouds to show up just a little bit. So I'm just going to add a few of these around and then I'm going to soften them by doing some ink blending at the bottom of the clouds because I don't want them to be like in your face. I want them to, when you're looking at this background, you can just make out the clouds. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is a swinging card. So this is an interactive card and I will be showing you how I created that. It is so super simple, so super easy, but really makes a huge impact. I wanted also this to be a five by seven card because the balloon will fit on a standard A2 size card, but I really wanted to see this background. Again, this is going to feel magical and this is a baby card. So just all of the colors together are really going to give you that feel. So I'm just blending at the bottom of those clouds. And as you can see, it's kind of softening that. So it's not just a cloud floating in the air. It just kind of blends in and you can see with each layer of color, this little tiny cloud. Now let's do the splatters. I am using some oxide sprays in peacock feathers, cracked pistachio and kitsch flamingo and i'm just going to keep that concentrated towards the bottom right and kind of up the right side and at the bottom i don't mind if some of my splatters go towards the moon but i didn't want anything to cover it. i just really wanted it nice and heavy at that bottom right so I'm just adding a little bit of the oxide spray to my work surface and I'm using a tiny paintbrush because I just really want to control where these splatters go. I'm also going to be using the Villainous Potion. I'm just going to press that down on my work surface and add a little bit of water and then splatter that. I did not have an oxide spray in this. So if you don't have oxide sprays, you absolutely just could use your ink pads and add a little water and then splatter that all over the background. So then I decided to come in with some B shimmery. This is a watercolor uh, shimmer watercolor and I'm going to splatter that all over that same area and really heavy at the bottom right and when you move this in the light it's so shiny and it just looks like a bunch of stars and it's absolutely gorgeous so I'm going to bring that up here so you can see just how pretty that is and when I turn it in the light you're going to see how that just shines and shimmers Okay, let's do the moon. So now that we have that masked off, I can bring in the second moon stencil and I am going to use Wilted Violet really lightly. I'm gonna tap off my brush after I rub it because I don't want it to be super dark and then just lightly blend over the little moon mask and then I will use the, uh, what is it the milled lavender excuse me and just go over that whole moon you could leave it like this if you wanted to but i really wanted everything to have this purple feel and almost like there's a haze going over the moon which really turned out absolutely stunning 
Okay, so here's the hot air balloon dies. I have die cut them twice from white cardstock. I actually ended up die cutting another one from gold mirror gold mirror cardstock, which I'll show you in a little bit. So you die cut one, and then you have these two pieces here that are going to die cut these strips that are gonna be on your balloon. So now once I run this through the die cut machine, we will have three pieces that you can color or whatever. I'm gonna ink blend, but you could also do this with colored cardstock if you did not wanna do any ink blending. So I'm gonna tape those in place with low tack tape and run that through my die cut machine. Now here are the two pieces that were on the outsides of the die cut. And I am using cracked pistachio, and I just wanna ink blend this with the edges being very dark. So I'm sh I'm doing some shadows with my ink blending. This is a great tip for you as far as if you don't wanna use multiple colors or how do you add shading and shadows with your uh, Distress Oxide ink blending and brushes, this is how you do it. I am ink blending and I'm most of it's rubbing off on my work surface and I'm just letting the brush bump into the ink, or excuse me, into the paper, which is leaving that dark inked edge. And then I'm lightly blending into the center. So this is just gonna give us a nice, just shaded look. I'm gonna do the same thing for the centerpiece. This is Peacock Feathers. Again, as you can see, a lot of my ink is on my work surface and I'm just brushing that and letting the brush hit to the side of my cardstock. This is making a nice dark edge and then I can just use a lighter hand and less ink to ink blend all the way into the center. And you can do this pretty much with any image and it just really gives a beautiful, nice effect. And once this whole hot air balloon is put together, you'll see how that turned out. Okay, so here are the rest of these pieces that I've die cut, most of them from Gold Mirror cardstock. You have the basket, the, the pieces that hook the basket to the balloon, the top and bottom part of the balloon, and you've got the little banners there. So let's adhere this balloon. I, the centerpiece is gonna have foam tape. I want that to be popped up. That is gonna have some really nice dimension. And like I said before, I did cut a second piece from Gold Mirror cardstock. I decided to do that because I'm popping up that center piece. Sometimes you can, you know, depending on the angle, you could see the white cardstock underneath. And because I'm using so much gold, I thought it would be really pretty just to see a little hint of gold underneath. And it's really only when you're looking from the side. So I'm gonna place that right in the center, and again, that's popped up, and as you can see, that gives some really fantastic dimension, and you can see that gold just a little bit when you tilt it to the side. Now, let's adhere the basket. I've got my top part of my basket piece I'm lining up right at the top, and I've just die cut that from craft cardstock. Then I have the gold mirror piece that I'm going to adhere. I did not do any ink blending on the basket. I really wanted the focal point to be the balloon itself. So I just kept the basket really super simple. Then you have the top of the balloon and a bottom piece of the balloon that are both gold mirror cardstock. Here are the ropes, I guess, that are holding the basket to the balloon. I die cut those from gold mirror cardstock and I just lined it up, added a little bit of liquid adhesive to the bottom and then just placed my basket on top and the one just kept falling but i'm trying to make sure that they are nice and straight and level and then i can adhere the basket to that once everything is dry the basket to the balloon is what i meant now i can adhere the bottom part of the balloon and i'm just going to use a little bit of tape runner to adhere that and it's only gonna to stick to that middle part because that's the part that's popped up for dimension. And then you have the top piece, which just totally finishes off this balloon, again, with the gold mirror. I thought the gold mirror cardstock would just add a, an extra level of sophistication to this card. And I'm really glad I used it because it is so, so pretty. So a little bit of liquid glue and tape runner just to hold that in place until the liquid glue dries. And I'm going to attach it to the ropes. Now I have a couple more die cuts. I'm just taking the inks that I used on the background and just putting them onto my cardstock. So you've got the cute like little sandbags and I'm going to die cut two of those. And then you have the pendants, the little pieces for the pendant. This fills in more color. So I thought I'm just gonna use the same colors for the background to bring onto the balloon against the beautiful 
uh, green and turquoise. So now I have my gold mirror cardstock pennants that I'm going to adhere down with some liquid glue. I've got the largest one for the center and then two smaller ones for the side. I had to die cut that twice. And I'm gonna line that up and I can trim off the excess that is hanging over. Once I put that into place, I already have my little filler pieces for the pendant that I have lined up in order. So I did like a dark, a medium, another medium and a light. And that's the order I'm gonna go in across. There's eight um, little sections here and I had four colors, so it absolutely worked out perfect. I'm going to adhere those cute little sandbags at the bottom. I think this would be a really cute shaped card too because that balloon is such a good size that you really could just make this a fun little shaped card. So I'm adding dots of liquid glue and then I just have my crystal katana here that I can just grab those and put those in place and make sure that the gold mirror behind it is nice and equal on all sides. And as you can see that pop of purple on this just really kind of pulls everything together. So let me just finish this last one, which is really, really cute. This one just kept sliding around. And now that is so, so darling. Now look at this on top of our background. Okay, so I have some circle dies. I have a tiny circle die. I'm gonna put that in place. So we're gonna die cut a hole in our background. This is gonna be for the swinging mechanism. So I'm just eyeballing where I want that to be. I'm going to put that in place, tape that down, and run that through the die cut machine. And that is going to be where the swinging mechanism goes through. Now, you guys, I totally forgot to record me adhering the swinging mechanism. So I'm going to show you how I did it here. So here's the hole in the background. Here is a little glider for slider cards. Then I have two pieces of white cardstock that are die cut slightly larger than the hole in the background. I'm going to adhere that glider to that back circle piece. I'm going to put my background over it so now it's centered. I'm going to add some glue to the glider and adhere that top piece. Then you would add glue to the top piece and then your balloon would adhere to that and then it would swing back and forth nice and easy. So super, super simple. Now here is the sentiment from the classic sentiments. It says happy baby shower, which I thought was really super cute. But you could do boy or girl card. I figure you could get away with either one with the color combinations that are in this card. I prepped my cardstock with a powder tool. Then I'm stamping it with clear ink and then coming in with some gold embossing powder. And I'm gonna heat that until it's nice and melted. I do wanna add some foam tape behind my inked card panel. And I doubled it over because I wanted that a mechanism to be able to move nice and easy and I'm going to center that in my white five by seven card base. So once I get that in place we're going to add another one of the gliders on top of that circle. It's going to give us some that balloon some 3D dimension and I also added a glider behind the basket just so it will slide and also stay popped up. So some liquid glue, I'm gonna put that next glider in place and then add some more liquid glue on top of that. But first I wanted to add my sentiment because I wanted to make sure this balloon would slide or swing, excuse me, without bumping into the sentiment. So I popped that up with some foam tape to give it dimension and then just placed it over the moon. I'm adding a little bit more liquid glue to that glider and then adhering my balloon. I finished by adding some gold sequins all the way around my card, but I did want to make sure that they were not going to be in the way of my hot air balloon swinging. So I made sure to adhere them in spots that it was not going to stop that. And then here is that balloon and you can just see how fun it swings from side to side and how much fun that is. This is a super easy interactive card to create. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I hope that you enjoyed this project and I hope that you feel inspired. Have a wonderful day. Bye.